guys, welcome to BTM Africa. My name is NY DJ. Today I have an amazing personality join me. I describe almost everybody who comes on this show as amazing because we do not just sit with anybody. We sit with amazing personalities and that's what best qualifies her. She's a gospel artist based in the US of A, of course, a Ghanaian. And uh, we're going to have a conversation about who she is. Her name is Nanajua. But for those who perhaps will be asking, who is Nanajua? Check out this video. We shall be right back. <laughs> All right, so that's a video from Nana Joy. Like I said in the introduction, she is a Ghanaian based in the US of A. Nana, how are you? I am doing great. How are you? I'm good. Awesome. Your accent. Were you born in the States? No, or? I was not, but I was. I was there at a little age, so okay. yeah, that's, that contributes to why, maybe. Mm. So today people are really going to know that my accent is locally acquired. Please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you were born in Ghana, actually. Yes, please. Mm, where in Ghana were you born? In Teshi. Teshi, in Accra? Yeah, in Accra. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay, I lived there for a while. Oh, really? So yeah. you speak Ghana? No. I mean, I went to visit my sister. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but can you speak Ghana? though? I do. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. What, what is the first Ghana word that comes to mind? Um, Tete. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be me right there. Anyway, so you were born in Ghana. Yes. At what age did you move from Ghana? Um, at the age of 13. 13. Yes, please. So you started schooling here. Yes. Are you able to remember any of your schoolmates, though? Yeah. Well, yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, a couple. A couple of them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So you left to the States, obviously, perhaps to go steady or something. At what point did you uh, discover that you could really do music? Well, um, this music thing actually started off at a very young age. Mm. I grew up in the family setting of, uh, full of musicians, oh. gospel musicians, okay. pastors and all. So it's mm. like constantly we had gospel music playing, playing in the yeah. house. So it became part of me. Mm. But at the age of, let's say... 16, 17 ish, I started, you know, considering this, thinking, wow, this is actually something I want to do. Mm. Um, so let's say at the age of 22, I became very serious with it. Wow, interesting. So it started from home. Obviously, yes, because we were surrounded by these people. Exactly. Was your dad a pastor? Is your dad a pastor? No, not my dad, but my grandmother was okay. a pastor. Okay. Uh, my grandfather sings. Mm. Uh, my uncles, most of my uncles sings. My mother sings as well. Interesting. So that's where I got it from. So you started those in the States, I'm pretty sure. I started here. But taking I, music seriously, seriously you in started the in the States. Yes, please. And how was it? I mean, a Ghanaian being in the States and uh, starting this music thing. How was it for you? Um, it was okay. It has not been an easy uh, route. Because mm. I say this because for the kind of music I do, yeah. my audience being mostly Ghanaian, it's hard to kind of penetrate. You not being here physically to promote your songs. I'm speaking in terms of promotion. Because okay. you can come out with a song out there and it doesn't really get to my mm, people. The audience, here. yeah. yeah. Mm. So that's been one of the challenges. Challenges, yeah. That was something I was going to go to because um, most of the time, Ghanaians feel this is our own when they are down here. But you being in the States, it becomes a major problem trying to get your music. Is it because you couldn't really connect with the people or is it because you were focused on the States where you were? Well, I, was, I wouldn't say I was focused. I, everything I was doing, it was for... You know everybody mm. basically but it's just a little amount of people that are in the states that are Ghanaians mm. so if these amount of people are just listening to your songs it's not really getting out yeah. there it means it's limited it's limited exactly mm. so um, again it's a challenge but we're getting there we're getting there. That's how come you're on BTM Africa today. And congratulations, because I, I realize that you've been on a number of interviews trying to make sure that yeah. at least the Ghanaian audience also gets to know who Nana Jua is. Yes, please. When did you release your very first official single? Can you remember? Oh, single. That was back in 2016. Oh, some six years ago. Yes. But I have two albums out. 
Yes. And the first one was released in 2006. Mm -hmm. That's in Shura. That's some 16 years ago. Yes. Wow. Yes. And um, the second one was released in 2016. Mm. Yes. Mm. And around that same year, I came out with a single as well. Okay. Let's talk about the first single. Okay. Are you able to sing it? Yeah. 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 Because I know a lot of secular artists who get to forget their lyrics. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And I know gospel artists who have actually forgotten their lyrics on stage. Oh. So I don't know if they were carried away by the Holy Spirit Probably. or something. But can you remember it? I can. Are you able to draw a line or two for us? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Da da, me bomi sen kuda, o salberi me, Davide me bomi sen kuda, me di de wuta, enichi me bomi sen kuda. Me te me trim o me kanfo, me te fu mi nyanku pone. O sa beri me, me bo mi sen kuda. E ni chi mo, are u mo, me bo mi sen kuda. Beautiful. I'm not going to sing to that because the last time I tried singing, <laughs> somebody told me that I help artists actually mess up their songs. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not going to join, but that's beautiful. Thank you. And that was the very first single you dropped yes, way back. Yes. Who are your inspirations? Like, who do you sit back and say, listen, I listen to this person, I want this person, I would, I would want to pick something from that individual to make who I am as Nanajwa. Yes. Um, I would say my mother's um, Daughters of Glorious Jesus. Oh, okay. Mama Amy Newman. Oh. And um, my, my papa, um, Yao Sapon. Oh. See, I, I, there's something about the oldies mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. just, you know, it gets you there. Yeah. Um, they just inspire me a lot. That's, that's all I could say because they're, when you listen to or when you focus on the way they, they put their, song their songs together, songs together. Yeah. the lyrics and all, it's, yeah. it's just amazing. I was going to say, is it because you grew up listening to them or what informed you choosing them as the people you look up to? I'll say it's part of it. Mm. And also the fact that I actually sat down and paid attention to their lyrics. Okay. Yes. And mm. I, I'm like, I really want to go this path. Mm. Yeah. I do understand that um, you also have this likeness for uh, another amazing Ghanaian artist who's based in the UK. You are in the US. She's based in the UK. That is um, Diana, Diana Andrew Hamilton. Yes. What is it with you and Diana? I call her Auntie Diana. Okay. Yes. <laughs> she calls me sis, mm. but I, I don't want to go on that level with her because she's someone I look up to. Mm. She is like, she, she got it all. Mm. Yeah. Like, <laughs> come to the business aspect of it. She's there. She's confident. She's, she got it. Mm. You know, and it's like, I've been, I've been listening to her for a very long time now. Mm. It's, if you, if you ask me to sing like any of her old songs, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to. Okay. Not now though, okay. but th those days. I wouldn't be able to. I wasn't just, I wasn't paying attention to the songs she mm -hmm. was doing, but I was just paying attention to the, her consistency. Okay. You know, how she kept going and never mm -hmm. stopped. Mm -hmm. And that inspires me a lot. Wow. She's one person I look up to mm -hmm. like now when we're talking about the modern people now yeah. oh my goodness yeah from the way you, you talk about her is there anything in the pipeline are you guys working on something i'm praying about it <laughs> <laughs> i am praying about it and i believe she's also praying about it mm. yes i know a lot of people will love yeah. to see us do something so together. it's going to be a, a ghana by uk us collaboration yes I like that <laughs> You recently performed at her concert, her yes, music uh, concert. Yes. How did you feel? Like, I mean, looking at somebody you look up to and mounting the same stage with her. It was a dream come true. Mm. Um, okay. I quite remember when she, Auntie Diana called me. Just like, Nana, I pray, I've prayed about this. Um, I want you to also pray about it. I really want you to be at Experience 2022 here in Ghana. I was like, oh my God. Mm. No, I literally saw this coming actually. Oh. I saw it coming. So when she called me, I was like, oh my God, this is actually happening. happening. It's, 
it, it was quite an experience. Mm. I thank her, I thank her for the opportunity. Um, I don't take it for granted at all. It, it was everything I'd say I, I, I prayed for. Mm. One of one of the things I prayed for, and yeah. it, it has actually come come to pass. Yeah. Interesting. So for those of you perhaps just tuning, this is BTM Africa. My guest is Nanajwa. She is a gospel artist, Ghanaian, but based in the U.S. of A. Let me move a little bit away from the music. I can see you're wearing your ring, a very beautiful yeah, one, of thank course. You. You're married, right? <laughs> yes, please. Been married for nine years now. Oh, wow. With three amazing kids. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. How many boys, how many girls? Two boys, one girl. Okay, so maybe my next is going to be a girl, right? Because oh. <laughs> I've got two boys. I need to get a girl as well. <laughs> but I ask because... Most of the time we hear gospel artists and, you know, ministry, they get married to the people who are also in ministry and all the stories we hear, uh, you know, challenges, troubles, especially yeah. we, we hear those ones. We never hear the other good sides to it. How has marriage actually impacted your ministry or otherwise? Well, I'd say I thank God for the man I have, mm. the kind of husband I'm married to. Um, I just, I always say this, that God actually ordered my steps to this man because mm. he also sings. Oh. He used to, yes. He used to sing. Wow. Yeah. He was even more famous than I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and we met, we met through, you know, we, I, I ended up doing a, this concert thing for a church. Okay. And he was invited over. Mm. He needed someone to do his beavis for him. Oh. He found me there and started doing his beavis. Uh -huh. And then we ended and the up beavis led, led to. to <laughs> exactly. Oh. It led to the, but um, I thank God for the man I have. We pray a lot. Mm. Um, we've seen things, we've heard things couples go through, yeah. especially couples in ministry. Mm. Um, and we pray that never be our story. Okay. Um, pretty much that's all I can say. Does he do everything like, I mean, others, do you see the money there? Is he or... He, he doesn't or he's wanna, just a husband? He, <laughs> yes. See, he doesn't even want to be called a manager, but okay. he's just there. He mm. does everything. Okay. The husband, the stylist, the manager, the oh, everything. I get it. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, I mean, part of this interview, you needed somebody to actually my care. <laughs> and the husband had to do it. I couldn't trust Nana to two. My camera guy to do that. So the husband had to do that for us. Thank you very much, Mr. Husband. I already <laughs> mentioned the Nina, but I'm obviously people know him. Yeah, he's and called Honorable Nana Nimo. Honorable Nana Nimo. So Honorable Nana Nimo shouts to you. I like the way she mentioned it, though. I can't mention it because of the Ghanaian accent. So oh, forgive you me on that. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> forgive me on that one. When it comes to songwriting, mm. are you the one who is open to ideas from people or you want to do everything by yourself? Oh, I am open to ideas. Mm. I believe in um, your feedback. I okay. believe in quality. Mm -hmm. I believe it because at the end of the day, it's for the people, not just for myself, yeah. you understand? So my husband does most of the writing mm. together with some people okay. uh, like Papa Ura, mm. that's Oja's little brother, yeah. and also Pastor Kwame Jedu. Oh, Jedu, yes. Kwame Jedu, yeah. Yes. Mm. So he does most of the, I let him know how I'm feeling about his situation, mm. how, you know, maybe an encounter I've had, mm. I explain to him and then he puts it down, wow. he consults Papa Ura or anybody else and then, you know. But then the song has to kind of speak to me as well. Yeah, yeah. When they bring it back, mm -hmm, I, I mm -hmm. kind of have to get into it yeah. before it's even, mm -hmm. it even comes out. Interesting. Guys, so check out. Just make sure that you find her video links or her channel link beneath our video as well. So you can check out her channel and check out some of the amazing videos that she also has out there for you. Still watching BTM Africa, Nanadra is my guest. All right, so now let's look at the albums you talked about. Yes. Two albums, couple of singles out there. When was the last album? 2016. 16. Okay, tell us, from then till now, it's been six years, the journey from then till now, and the new singles with Job, how are they doing the reception and all that? They're doing great. Mm. I'll say, um, with the album though, I didn't, it wasn't easy 
mm. because I've been away for some time. Yeah. I came to Ghana in 2016 to do that recording okay. and went back. Left it for some people to, you know, do promotions and stuff, mm. but it really didn't go too oh. well. Yes, please. But um, now it's doing well. Mm. It's doing well. I'll say the... I've been more active on social media, okay. so my songs are being recognized mm. now. Mm. So, yeah, I'd say it's it's good. Did you did you have collaborations on those projects? Yes, please. Um, I have uh, the track. I think the track four. I did it with um, Joe Metal. Okay. Uh, That's wonderful, God. Mm. And the track six was done with uh, my brother Francis Samo. Okay. And the first track was done with Papa Ora, one mm. farm mano. Yes, please. Mm. Now you coming back to Ghana, obviously, to make sure that you get connected to the right people and get connected to the people, so they feel a part of the whole process and the journey. You tell me that it's, it's been going so well so far. Yeah. How was it back in the States? I mean, if you look at the Ghanaian audience here and in the States, you being a Ghanaian trying to promote your music there as well. Mm -hmm. How different is it? Because most of the time, you hear Ghanaian artists say, the Nigerians come here and they come to dominate, so we can't go to their place. Other than saying, you are becoming too lazy because you are just staying back and okay with the Ghanaian audience. Mm. How is it like for somebody, I mean, you are there, how is it like? To want to say you want to promote your material there promoting your songs there is is good mm. but it's not too good like i mentioned earlier you're just limited and if i'm getting the question right mm -hmm. um you actually kind of have to be here in Ghana. To, to get it promoted to here. To get it promoted here. I don't personally believe in being there and having your songs being promoted somewhere else. Because mm. I physically want to be here and see how things are actually going. Okay. But glory be to God, I have people now, good people that have come around to help me do this even when I'm not around. Okay. So you talk about promoting the music in Ghana and getting the right people to actually help you embark on this media at all mm -hmm. and all that. You are in America. There are yeah. a number of Ghanaians who want their music perhaps to, to cross over to America and start making playlists on there mm -hmm. and making charts and all that. How easy or difficult is it? And you've been there, have you made an effort or an attempt to also try get your music there and how has it been? I have Okay, thank you. But see, it's, it's very difficult and hard because I say this because you can't even get the people. It's mm. pretty much like everybody's kind of busy mm. doing their own thing. And then again, I, I remember you mentioned language barrier. Mm. That's key too, because when you look at the, my um, audience, the, mm -hmm. the people I sing to, are the Ghanaians, okay. you understand? Trying to get my songs, people over there in the United States to help me promote the songs. You can't even find the people. It's mm. hard and it's expensive as well. Mm. You get it, yeah. Mm. It's really, really expensive. Let's, let's, for example, like get in a studio over there to go record. It's, it's not easy. Wow. So I personally have my own studio. Studio where you get to record, you take vocal, your vocals and then... And that's it, okay. yeah. And so for when it comes to Ghana, you know, we have people in the media that, mm. you know, are willing to help mm. artists. Mm. And I really appreciate that. Mm. When we came down, I thank God, I keep telling my husband I appreciate this so much. Like people are coming around to help mm. push this because Honestly, like I mentioned, it's not easy over there to find people to do that, but and I'm, I'm grateful I found people here. Yeah. So for those of you out there who are always saying, Ghanaians don't want to go to America to promote their music, it's <laughs> not as easy as you guys think. It's pretty hard, it's pretty tough. Yeah. You, need to be, you need to be break your back to actually make that budget for that promotion out there in America. It's never, never easy. So it means it will take a miracle for perhaps your, your music to break into a playlist in America on an American radio or something? See, the language barrier. Mm. You have to, it, it all <laughs> comes, you know, it's, 
those little things uh. gotta come together for mm. you to kind of get there yeah. yeah it's not easy i'll be honest with you mm. it's not so considering all that you've said the language barrier and all that getting into all these playlists perhaps on these radio stations in america has it ever crossed your mind that okay i want to cross over in america let me perhaps do a strictly english uh, content or something all right so when the time comes for me to do english mm. i will okay to sing in english i will mm. but i want to focus more on what i've been called to do okay now mm. i strongly believe in my calling i strongly believe in what i'm doing okay. and i want to be consistent in it and focus mm. more on it um i'm not about the numbers how i'm gonna breakthrough how i'm gonna be on the chat and okay. all of that no mm. please mm. but um if i've been called to touch about let's say a thousand lives mm. and that is what i've been called to do mm -hmm. i want to finish with, with that, that before before i step mm. out of, mm. yes mm. and that's quite positive so you don't need to rush it because perhaps you have an objective to do something but you just need to stay focused and follow what your calling is so that you get there gradually. Now, Najwa is my guest on BTM Africa. Let's talk about the new single you've dropped. Erebar. What informed this particular single? Ah, Ereba, I, I always say this. This song is, it speaks to me in so many ways. Mm. I quite remember, life has not been easy. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's been Oh, really so even fun. in America, Oh life. yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, it's never easy. Yeah. Hey, ooh, it's okay. It's tough mm. everywhere. Okay, yes, I it's, understand. It's very <laughs> tough everywhere. Yeah. Um, but especially in this ministry, mm. I get it got to a point where I gave everything up because mm. I started giving my ears to people. Mm. You need to stop this. It's not for you. You should quit it. Like you need to find something else to do. Da 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 da, and all of that. But and I keep telling these people every time somebody comes to me with a negative comment, I go, mm -hmm. "It's coming." Oh, Ereba. Mm. I didn't even know what I was saying at that time, but I, that's all that comes out of my mouth, mm. Ereba, because I strongly. I always walk with this, that he that has started a good thing in me will yeah, surely bring it to yeah. an accomplishment. And I know that God, the God that has called me to this, he will never forsake me. He will never disgrace me, mm. no matter what. Yeah. And so, um, Ereba, my testimony is coming. Mm. Those secret prayers are being answered. So let everything calm down. Like, okay. Everybody, just be quiet. Brother Sammy will say a Rubianka day. But everything should be calm because everything is definitely going to well, work out well. Yeah. So just calm down. Check out that new material from Nana Joa. Title is, I mean, we write Ereba, but we say Ereba. Ereba, so you, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure you guys can check it out on various streaming platforms and get connected with that. All right, so we can to do for us a line or two of Ereba. Before we wrap up. Sure. Nehu o come via. Nehu ni a fobo via. Se o tse panko fita so. Di mi rika ding ding ripa. En kunin de bonitio. Min pai banu ye ye crano. Mazas in tidin. Nama dance di ye ripa. Wow, yes. that's beautiful. Thank you. That's beautiful. Thank and the voice is very golden as well. Thank you. Um, hopefully, the world gets to hear such an amazing talent and all that she has to offer. Nana Joy has been fun having you and it's been very eye opening as well. Thank you very much. You care to share the social media handles with us? Yes. So, on Instagram, it's official Nana Joy. And on YouTube, it's official Nana Joy TV. And on Facebook, it's Nana Joy Nemo. Again, Instagram, official Nanajwa. On YouTube, it's official Nanajwa TV. And on Facebook, it's Nanajwa Nimo. Thank you. It's been amazing having Nanajwa on VTM Africa today. I'm pretty sure you're inspired by her message. And of course, the very inspiration behind Ereba is even amazing. The lyrics to the songs, very, 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 very touching. Just go check out the material on all social media platforms 
our streaming platforms as well and help the message go as far as it can. My name is NYDJ. This has been BTM Africa. Big shout out to the Creativita, big shout out to Hoopro, and of course to Bellucci and Nanatu and to Kusi as well for helping in this filming. Thank you very much. Catch you some other time on BTM Africa.